it was an amazing journey, Rich, uh, from when I started in 2012 to um, the sale of the company uh, last year to WebMD, uh, both a personal journey as well as a business journey. And I know I learned so much. There were so many highs and so many lows, um, but ultimately um, it was an amazing journey, one that uh, I look back on fondly. Um, and so at its core, PulsePoint is a digital advertising technology company. So we help uh, big brands put their ads in front of consumers online. And so um, our journey started in 2012 when I took over a struggling company. Uh, it was a prototypical turnaround um, and applied a lot of the scaling up techniques that you would apply to any business to a turnaround, um, making sure you had the right focus, the right goals, the right pe people uh, on the bus, uh, and making sure that everyone was aligned and had good communication cadence. Um, uh, once we got that turnaround done, uh, we went through literally two major pivots at the company. Uh, and I could say Freescale joined us at the very start of that first pivot. Um, so the first pivot was around programmatic advertising. Uh, the market was changing uh, as we were rebuilding the company. And we hopped on that um, that trajectory and built the company. When I first joined, we were $67 million. We basically turned the business around and we started with a base of $12 million. That $12 million went to about $125 million. Uh, and that launched the second major pivot, which was taking our technology and verticalizing it for the healthcare vertical. Um, so we focused on solving some major needs in the marketplace for healthcare marketers. Uh, and so that pivot uh, happened, started in 2015, and we grew a business from basically zero uh, to this year will be about $150 million uh, with a very strong margin profile of around 67, 68%. And uh, in terms of headcount, when I first started, uh, we had about 220 people. Um, we took that down to about 60 people as part of the turnarounds. And then uh, when we exited, uh, we have about 175 people now uh, in the company. So once again, an amazing journey, both personally and professionally. And one thing that I would say is having a partner uh, along that journey, like Freescale, like Rich and, and Wayne, uh, both, both of you participated in this journey and you were instrumental in allowing PulsePoint to both um, uh, utilize the, the scaling up methodology and basically um, deploy it and execute against it really well. So without you, without the scaling up methodology, uh, we would have failed. And um, clearly we didn't, uh, we exited um, last year at an amazing valuation. And we're, we're so happy to have you as a partner. Uh, so what I learned over the years, and as you get older, I think you become much more introspective around this specific issue, which is, you know, always constantly learning and growing and developing and refining, just getting being better today than you were yesterday. And so I've been using free, uh, scaling up methodology, Vern's, you know, uh, book and methodology for probably 20 years and relatively successfully. But I realized uh, in around 2015 or 16 that uh, this was kind of an epiphany for me that I can actually be much better at it um, if I had help and the right coaching. And I think about LeBron James, perhaps the best basketball player, arguably, on the face of the earth. You know, LeBron James has 13 coaches, right? He has a shooting coach, a nutrition coach, a stretching coach. And so if LeBron James, the best player in basketball, needs coaching, Sloan getting on running Pulse Point certainly could use some help as well. And so I met you at a scaling up conference. Um, we got to know each other and um, I found out very uh, soon thereafter that I think you were going to be a really the right fit for me as a coach because you, you were a good cultural fit. Um, you had run a business, you had had your ups, your own ups and downs. You had worked with, outside investors with your private equity firm. And last but not least, and perhaps most importantly for me, and 
I would share this with anyone who's looking for a coach. You want a coach who's not going to bullshit you. You need someone who's going to be frank, direct, and make you better than you were better uh, tomorrow than you were today. And, and you and uh, Wayne did that with me. You know, I, I was always a very people centric uh, person. Uh, when I was an individual contributor, I was like that. And as I grew as a, as a manager, and um, I, I also was very people centric. I think the breakthrough for me was the realization that I didn't need to be a manager. I needed to be a coach. And I think that's what I got from you, Rich. The ability to understand that being a great leader and being a great manager and executing well is about being a great coach. And so, you know, Bill Belichick doesn't coach on Tuesdays and Thursdays. He coaches every day at every practice and at every game. And so that's kind of what I was my big, uh, my big um, illumination uh, when I met you, which was, hey, you have to be a coach to people. And although you're using tools like scaling up, um, you know, whether you're doing the strategic one pager, whether you're doing an L10 meeting, whether you're doing goal alignment or scorecards or all the other management tools that you've taught us, within that framework, you have to be a coach to all your players on your team. And so that was the big uh, uh, illumination or epiphany for me, Rich, in terms of transforming myself from, I think, a pretty good manager to hopefully a great manager and a great coach. Yeah, as with any business, you're going to go through different phases of your business. And we went through that turnaround phase, uh, phase pretty early. And the team that I had in place needed to be changed. And so we changed that team. And then we went through the first evolution of our business. And we had other folks on our bus. And then um, we realized, and I think you helped me realize this, Rich, that I had the wrong, some of the wrong people on the bus. And so in 2015 and 16, we went about transforming the team. Uh, and a lot of what you taught me was around trying to identify the right, not only skills, but the right cultural fit. And that was instrumental in us building a team that was, um, for me, was the best team I've ever worked for uh, by far. And so um, by the time I, I uh, the business was sold and I left the business uh, shortly um, thereafter, uh, our average tenure on the senior team was 7.5 years, which was quite amazing. Um, you rarely ever get uh, senior teams that have that sort of tenure. And the chemistry on the team and the alignment of the team was, was palpable. I'll give you a perfect example. When we were selling the business and most of my time was focused on, uh, focused on that sale process, the team that I had in place and the team that we had worked with for the past seven or eight years, um, they almost instinctively did what we needed them to do. Uh, so every planning session, uh, if I was there or wasn't there, uh, they would, you know, focus on the strategic one pager. They would focus on their chess moves. They would focus on the leading and lagging indicators. Uh, all the tools that we had worked and coached them on over the past seven years came to fruition and they knew what to do and they knew how to do it really, really well. And that's where the coaching part comes in. If you coach your team and you have a, a, a well-executed team, you can really um, supersize your growth and supersize your execution. I do want to pause and take a moment to think about a situation that happened uh, in 2015 when you first started coaching me, Rich. Um, I didn't have the right people on the bus. And uh, there was one person on our team who was probably not the great cultural fit and probably wasn't executing well and needed to be, um, we, we needed her to, 
her to um, leave the business. And so I remember you took me down to the bar and this is what I talked about earlier about being frank, direct and making sure that I saw the light. Um, you said, hey, this person is not going to allow you to achieve what you want to achieve. You need to make a change. And that really gave me the, the gumption and uh, the, the, the ability to do what I needed to do without hesitation. And that's the value of a great coach. Um, they coach you and then you coach your team. And in this situation, it was exactly what I needed. Hey, Rich, I get this question all the time when I'm coaching others that their biggest investment and their best ROI on an investment will be a coach. It goes back to my reference before about LeBron James. LeBron James doesn't say, you know what, I'm not going to get a, a stretch coach or a shooting coach because it's too expensive and it's not really going to help elevate my game. He says the opposite. He says, if I don't get a stretch, good stretch coach, or I don't have a good shooting coach, it's going to impact the ultimate value that I have in the league. And I would say the same thing for coaches. Um, it will be, if you choose your coach correctly, it will be your best investment and your best ROI on an investment in your business, hands down. When you think about what a coach can do, it makes you better as a CEO or a senior executive. It makes your team better as a, as a collective body. In addition, it has tools that will save you not only time, but it'll save you money and it'll save you frustration and friction and failure. And you can't put a price on that. And let me give you an example. Um, if you think about the team meetings that you have every day as an executive, you spend hours upon hours in team meetings. If you can get a tool that can help you be much more efficient in those meetings, the return on that is astronomical. And that's just one tool that Rich and Wayne can teach you. They have a lot, a lot of different tools that they can teach you to apply against your business that can provide that ROI. Um, so if you can't get a return from having a great coach, then something's wrong with you, your business, and the way you approach your self-development and self-growth. There's the old adage, you get out what you put in. And that's the same thing with a coaching engagement. It's not an insignificant investment, but what is? Does LeBron James only play basketball like games or does he practice? He practices a lot, right? He shoots, he practices free throws. He practices his three points shot. Um, he stretches. And so working with a coach is, there is a lot of practice. Um, but that investment pays off in the end. And so um, I would share that there's probably uh, a f at least a few hour a week commitment to making your coaching engagement really rewarding and getting the upside of it. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're putting in a few minutes a week, that's probably not going to do it. If you're putting in 10 or 20 hours, that's probably too much. Uh, but somewhere in that middle is that sweet spot where you get the right coaching, the right mentorship. You get to learn all the tools that will make you better. And that return is uh, incalculable. Yeah, I would share with uh, senior executives and CEOs that you have to find the right coach for you. Um, just like a spouse you have to make sure there's a good fit. And same thing with the coach. There's probably some really horrible coaches out there and there's some amazing coaches, uh, but you have to find an amazing coach who's the right fit for you. And not all coaches will be the right fit for you. Rich and Wayne will, won't be the, same, the right fit for some people. Um, so make sure that you invest early on in understanding how Rich and Wayne and Freescale approach your business and approach learning and growing um, and deploying the tools that, that they will teach you um, that will um, make sure that you're, you're, you're matched up really well with the right coach 
um, and the right mentor. Um, the other thing I, I would note is a great coach is going to know you better in a lot of respects than your own spouse or your friends. They're going to get to know what your blind spots are. And those blind spots are really important to understand. Because in a lot of cases, no one's telling you what your blind spots are. <laughs> you have to guess what they are. And when you have a great coach and they're candid and transparent and they want to make you better, they're going to share what they see as your blind spots. And they're going to help you address those blind spots in the best way possible. And so um, make sure you have a coach who's going to be candid and will be honest and will share those blind spots with you to make sure that you're getting the best um, return on your investment, uh, but also that you're going to be a, the best CEO that you can be, irrespective of all the blind spots you have and I have. Yeah, so when, when evaluating coaches, um, there's a lot of different options out there. Uh, in some cases, there, there are groups of coaches. And in that case, you may just get one of a, a group of coaches and the company will assign you a coach. Um, I'm not sure that's the best approach. Uh, and then there are uh, a number of uh, individual or solo coaches that work just directly with you. Um, and you get the benefit of, of, of their, their knowledge and their coaching. Uh, and then there's Freescale, which I think is uh, the best merge of those two. Uh, because with Freescale, you get Rich and you get Wayne, um, and you get to work with both of them. And they both have very different skill sets, very different styles, very different perspectives. And uh, I think that's important when you're uh, looking to learn and grow and, 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 and scale your business. <clears throat> Perfect example is uh, uh, I had some uh, systemic issues with board management and so uh, I remember one instance where I came to Rich and I came to Wayne and I said, this is my issue. What do you think? And they didn't get together beforehand and, and come up with a singular answer. They both really, and they did, they did this con pretty consistently, they gave me two perspectives on the, the issue I was dealing with. And that ultimately, I think, made me better, made me smarter, made me more intelligent, made me more thoughtful around the solution to the problem I was trying to solve. And so for me, um, with Freescale, you get the, the benefits of, of two great minds, two great coaches, but very different styles and very different approaches.